How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here, and in this video we're going to be covering the Ultimate FPS Increase Guide for Spider-Man Remastered for PC. In this video we're going to be covering all of the best settings, depending if you're looking for more FPS or visual quality. So at the end of this video, regardless of what hardware you're running on, whether it be AMD, Nvidia, Intel, a desktop, laptop, high-end, low-end, old or new, you will be left with the best, smoothest and most enjoyable gameplay experience possible. But before we jump into all of that, a message from today's video sponsor, GamerSubs is a keto-friendly, zero-calorie, zero-sugar, health energy drink replacement offering organic caffeine electrolytes six crucial vitamins and minerals and nootropics to sharpen focus and decrease reaction time and if you don't fancy the caffeine caffeine free versions of most gamersups flavors are available in 120 serving tubs gamersups is a powdered energy formula that delivers long-lasting energy increased endurance faster reflexes and comes in at a fraction of the cost of a canned energy drink with 100 servings per tub averaging 35 cents per serving with countless flavors shakers and accessories to choose from, it's time to ditch the big brand energy drink companies, ditch the extra sugar, extra calories and all of the nonsense, and opt for cleaner, cheaper and more diverse energy lineup. If you're not sure where to start, GamerSubs are offering an exclusive free GamerSubs samples pack featuring three flavors with two servings in each pack, equaling six free drinks using the link in the description down below. Click on the link, hit add to cart, you won't have to pay any shipping and you'll have samples arrive to your door completely free of charge so you can try before you buy. If you like the product, consider supporting the channel today using code PANGINO at checkout for 10% off or alternatively using the link in the description down below. And a massive thanks to GamerSubs for sponsoring today's video. Before we boot up the game, it's important that we make sure a few Windows settings have been set up correctly. As Spider-Man does make use of some of the newer technologies with inside of Windows, they're very quick and easy to set up, so let's do that now. First of all, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, type game space mode, open up game mode settings, and I'd recommend switching this to the on position. Next up, it's incredibly important to ensure that we are running on the latest GPU drivers. If you've tried booting Spider-Man before and you are not up to date, you'll more than likely be met with a warning message similar to this. Whether you're running on an AMD or Nvidia GPU, or you're not sure what GPU you have, hit Control, Shift, and Escape on your keyboard, head over to the Performance tab at the top, scroll all the way down to GPU 0. On the top right hand side of this panel, it will show you which GPU you have installed to your system and which you are using. Do a quick Google search or use the links in the description down below for either AMD Radeon or Nvidia GPU drivers. For those of you running on an Nvidia GPU, GPU, navigate down to the Automatic Driver Updates Utility, download this. For those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs, you can also use the Auto Detect and Install for Windows 10 or 11 app on the left hand side. Once it's downloaded, open it up, install the driver. Once all of the GPU drivers are up to date and the basic windows are set, another quick thing in which you should definitely look to do if it's available on your system is to enable resizable bar support on your GPU. This can also be known as AMD's SAM. This could also be known as Rebar, Resizable Bar. This is slightly more of an advanced optimization that you'll need to look into for your specific PC and see if your GPU is available to use this setting. This is also a great opportunity to see if you have G-Sync, G-Sync compatible or FreeSync available on your system. Any and all of these technologies are absolutely phenomenal when it comes to AAA games, especially games where you're not going to be seeing incredibly high FPS. Spider-Man Remastered is going to be more of a cinematic gameplay experience and you're not going to want to turn down absolutely everything. You want to find a fine balance which is smooth in your system and looks great. For those reasons, if you do have G-Sync, G-Sync compatible or FreeSync available, I would 100% recommend to see if you can enable that both on your monitor and on your PC. To check and see if any of these options are available, you'll first of all need to enable your variable refresh rate mode in your monitor. This will typically be accessed with the settings button on the back of your monitor. With inside of here, you want to look through most of the main modes until you find something titled G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, AMD FreeSync, or any modes which are marked as variable refresh rate. On my monitor, it's marked as AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. Even though I have an Nvidia GPU on this PC, I'll need to enable this option. Once enabled, I can then go inside of my Nvidia control panel, head over to set up G-Sync on the left hand side and enable this on my PC. Alternatively, for those of you on a Radeon GPU, head over to your control panel, head over to the global graphics settings with inside of here, make sure that AMD FreeSync has been enabled. With all of that set up and out of the way, we're now ready to boot into the game to go through all of our settings. Head over to Steam or your preferred method of playing and hit play. Inside of the main launcher that opens up, we can navigate over to settings. The only thing I'd recommend doing is setting your full screen mode to exclusive full screen. Alternatively, if this does cause issues, go with full screen, but exclusive full screen should allow it to have the most priority on your PC when open. Navigate down to VSync. If you are planning on using G-Sync, FreeSync, or capping your game to 60 FPS or to your monitor's refresh rate, you can enable VSync, but I'm not using G-Sync or FreeSync, so I'm going to be going with VSync off, as I want to prioritize low latency. Make sure that your monitor's refresh rate is set as high as possible. We can then go ahead and select OK. Once set up, navigate over, select play. Now, if you don't have MSI Afterburner installed to your system, that's fine, but it's what I'm using to monitor my in-game FPS in the top left-hand corner. You can download and utilize this utility yourself 
if you wish to do so, installing MSI Afterburner with Revertuner Statistics Server, setting up and using the overlay. If you'd like to see a video tutorial on how to do that, check the bottom right of the screen right now and the link in the description down below. As you can see for me, we're in a live instance of the game so I can get a general idea of what my FPS is at. My FPS is already pretty good because I've already optimized it for this system. What we're going to go ahead and do is press escape, navigate down to settings, display and graphics. Now regardless if you're setting this up for a high-end system, low-end system, old or new, we're going to be going through all of these settings and my recommendations depending on your PC. Make sure that your display resolution for the monitor in which you're playing on has been set to the native resolution for the best visual quality possible. Regardless of how good or bad your PC is, I would 100% recommend utilizing DLSS if you have an Nvidia graphics card that supports it. Alternatively, if you can't use DLSS, I would recommend using AMD's FSR 2.0. With these upscaling methods, you can make use of the dynamic resolution scaling mode, but in my opinion, this is typically going to be good for those of you on seriously low-end GPUs, but for most people, I would recommend turning dynamic resolution scaling to off, as I don't recommend using it. Due to this game being very heavy on the CPU, do notice FPS drops, they are more than likely going to be caused by the CPU, which the game has no effect on, and it can't lower the resolution to fix that issue. So I'd recommend setting a static resolution scaling option instead. Use DLSS if you can. Alternatively, if you can't use DLSS, use AMD FSR. First of all, set your upscale quality to quality. Apply that setting, go back inside of your game, have a look how the game looks visually, move the mouse around so you can see how things look in motion. And if you're happy with this, fantastic. If you're not quite happy with the FPS you're currently getting, press escape, head down to settings, graphics, and we can lower that down to balanced. Regardless of the resolution in which you're running on your PC, I wouldn't recommend going lower than balanced because that's when you'll start to see quite heavy ghosting and visual artifacts from using downscaling. Balanced should be able to net you a sizable FPS increase without minimizing visuals too much. On my PC, I'm going to be sticking with balanced as I'm running at 4K. If I was running at 1080p or 1440p though, I'd be tempted to go with quality. For FSR users, you use the exact same settings for FSR, so either quality or balanced at the lowest, in my opinion. Here you can see using no upscaling filter, we're getting 72 frames per second. Setting DLSS to balanced as I'm running at 4K, we're already able to achieve about 100 frames per second, which is nearly a 40% FPS increase just from that setting. We can ignore everything else on this page as it's fully set up and head over to the graphics tab at the top. For texture quality, you want to set this to match the system spec in which you are using. If you're using a laptop or an extremely low-end GPU, I would go with low, as we don't want to be using too much VRAM which is available on our GPU. So set this to match your system spec. In my personal opinion though, I'd recommend going with texture quality high at the highest. Texture filtering, I'd recommend going with either four times or eight times on higher end PCs. For those of you on low-end PCs, go with two. Shadow quality has very little impact visually on the game. In my opinion, I'd recommend setting this to medium, regardless of how high-end your system is, as this will give you a noticeable FPS improvement with very little visual loss. For those of you on lower-end systems, you can go lower than this. Ambient occlusion, I'd recommend having set to SSAO, unless you again are running on a super low-end system where I'd recommend off. Screen space reflections are definitely recommended to have on, as it adds an extra layer of depth, as you can see just by looking at the puddle down there. Once again, for low-end systems, go with off, for anything else, go with on. Ray-traced reflections, we're going to be skipping this setting for now, as we're going to adjust the other in-game settings first and come back to this at the end of the video. Level of detail, I would recommend having set to medium on all PCs, unless, again, you're on a seriously low-end system, go with very low, as very low settings in this game still look great. Traffic and crowd density are going to be massive for reducing the CPU load on the game, which is more than likely going to be the primary bottleneck when your FPS reduces. For those of you that want the most amount of people on screen at once but the best FPS possible, set crowd density to medium at the highest. Traffic density, I'd recommend going with either low or medium. I like to have medium set for both, but again, if you're on a somewhat older CPU or lower end CPU, go with low or lower. Hair quality, going to be setting this to medium. Weather particle quality, you can leave this set to high for the best visuals possible, but I personally like to go down to medium. Depth of field is going to be set to low. The options underneath this are going to give the game a more cinematic feel, which I do think is appropriate, as this game is meant to be a cinematic, single player experience. For those reasons, we're going to keep bloom on, lens flares on. Chromatic aberration affects FPS ever so slightly, but it completely changes the visual style of the game. If you have a look around the edges of the screen here when I turn this off, you can see that everything becomes in focus and sharp. In my personal opinion, I'd actually recommend keeping this on. Vignette does a similar effect to this, but with brightness. Motion blur strength, I'd recommend having set to 5, as I think 10 is too strong. Field of view is completely personal preference. You will see a minor FPS adjustment from either using lower or higher settings. Filmic strength can add a nice look to the game by tinting it ever so slightly. Set this to anything you wish to do so. I personally like it off. Once that has been set up, press escape go into your game and see if you are happy with the game visually. If you would like to utilize or try out ray tracing, which I don't think is 100% necessary in this game as it looks fantastic without it, here are the settings I'd recommend. If you are utilizing ray tracing, you have to be using DLSS or AMD's FSR on AMD GPUs. The impact on both the GPU and CPU from enabling ray tracing in this game is absolutely 
massive so if you aren't using upscaling techniques with this you're going to see a serious tank to your fps with dlss or fsr set to balanced or quality head over to ray tracing switch this to on i would recommend setting reflection resolution and geometry detail both to high setting either of these above this will see significant performance impacts to the game it will slightly improve visuals especially details in ray traced areas such as mirrors but in my opinion it's not worth it and for the best fluid feeling game possible go with high object range is going to affect the distance in which objects are rendered at with ray tracing as you can see here maxed out at 10 you can see pretty much everything behind me is being reflected by this window if we reduce this down all the way down to one you can see we're losing a lot of detail and a lot of options but this is still completely ray traced in my opinion for lower end gpus which support ray tracing go with four otherwise you could go up to six seven or eight but in my opinion i typically go between four and six go back inside of your game and lastly fly around have a look around the area make sure that you are happy with your in-game settings in my personal opinion i don't think ray tracing is quite worth it for me yet even on an rtx 3080 ti your opinion may differ from that so you may wish to use this for me personally i like turning this off as i don't think the game looks bad without it and i get a sizable fps boost from not using ray tracing if you're wondering why my temperatures of my gpu are incredibly high right now whilst i'm recording it's because i have my gpu fans turned really low so the microphone quality isn't affected which leads me on to another incredibly important point just from simply tabbing out of my game and ensuring that my gpu fans are ramped up to a higher profile you're able to see that i was able to achieve about an extra 50 percent fps as my gpu wasn't thermal throttling so that's another thing you need to make sure you're looking out for when playing AAA experiences with really high settings is make sure that you're utilizing a custom gpu fan profile to ensure that you aren't throttling your gpu holding back performance at this point, once your game is completely locked in and you're happy with your in-game settings, I would definitely recommend capping your in-game FPS to make sure that you're having an extremely fluid experience. As you can see for me in this area, and whilst I play the game without ray tracing, I'm dropping down to about 90 FPS, or going up to about 130. For an extremely fluid experience, I would actually look to then cap my FPS at 90, and I can achieve this using RTSS, which is bundled with MSI. I can simply navigate over to the right-hand side to my frame rate limit, set this to 90, press enter. Once I go back inside of my game, you can see my frame pacing is incredibly smooth smooth, leading to a very fluid, predictable, extremely smooth gameplay experience even without G-Sync. It also manages to lower the overall watts being drawn from the GPU, lowering temperatures, leading to longer lasting performance in every way. If you're still looking for more FPS, there are a few other things in which you can look into and try. First of all is applying a GPU undervolt with an overclock to lower the amount of power your GPU is running, lowering the temperatures, leading to longer lasting performance, lower power bills, and it's a win-win-win. Next up is applying a CPU overclock. This game is very heavy on the CPU due to the amount of AI and NPCs that the game has to render. So giving your CPU more horsepower is definitely a great avenue. Alternatively, you can look to further lower the crowd density and traffic settings in the game and disable ray tracing as those three features are incredibly heavy on the CPU. And there you guys have it. Let me know how you're finding the game. Let me know of your results down below and what sort of system you're running on as it's fantastic to get a discussion going on down there. And if you are serious about optimizing your PC for the best FPS possible without having to spend a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now for further PC optimizations.